for 40 minutes now, this guy has been shooting dice at the craps table, and he hasn't hit a seven once. He can actually call out the numbers that he's going to hit. I have never seen any dice controller ever be able to do that. A large group of onlookers are now whooping and cheering his every throw. For pit bosses watching, frustration turns to anger. Change the stick man and make the message clear. They've got a problem on their hands, but they can't do anything in front of this crowd. It's too risky. The idea that an individual can take on a giant industry and defeat them at their own game is an incredible thrill. He rolls a six. He's just done it again. Who is this guy? And how is his crap strategy beating Vegas casinos night after night? It all started a few years earlier in 1997 when a software developer from New York was visiting Vegas for the weekend. Throughout the week, he runs a small tech firm, but his true interest lies in gambling. As an expert blackjack player, Dominic Larigio is facing an increasing problem. The casinos now use multiple decks to make counting harder or shuffle the cards more frequently. It's destroying his fun and killing his edge as a card counter. Plus, the casino staff are on the prowl for players like Dom. If they suspect he's counting, he'll be ejected pretty quickly. Dom faces a dilemma. He has no intention of quitting, but he's not willing to take unnecessary risks. He's there to beat the house. Gambling is business to Dom. It's not just about getting a rush or having fun. Sharp casino surveillance leaves him at a crossroads. Find a new advantage or quit forever. Whilst walking the casino floor one day, his next opportunity presents itself. A crowd of young women are shouting and cheering their luck. They're on a roll and onlookers are starting to pay attention. Each time they win, their cheers get louder. Until now, he's never been interested. Although his current predicament changes his perspective. One of the women claims to have a lucky grasp. He pauses for a moment and then it hits him. Craps is unlike any other casino game. Unlike other games, the player can directly influence the outcome of each hand. Rolling the dice means that potentially, the player can manipulate the results. Suddenly, his mind goes into overdrive. Is Craps ripe for advantage play, or would it be cheating? Craps is the most exciting game in a casino because it's the one game where everybody is in it together. Craps kicks off with a come out roll, which is the initial dice throw. Landing a 7 or 11 on this roll results in a win, whereas rolling a 2, 3 or 12 spells a loss. The objective then shifts to continually rolling the dice until one of the other key numbers, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9 or 10, is hit. Whichever number is rolled first establishes the point. The game's aim becomes to roll this point number once more before rolling a 7. For example, if your first roll after the come out is 5, then 5 is your point. You must then roll another 5 before a 7 appears. If a 7 is rolled before you can hit your point again, it typically results in a loss for most bets on the table and ends the round. To win big money, Dom needs to find a way of controlling the dice. He knows he can't get every roll right, but by manipulating the average outcome, it should be enough. The following day, he hits several of his local bookstores. Hungry for knowledge, he's determined to make this work. It won't be easy, but the upside is huge. Dom's friends tell him he's on a fool's errand. You see, conventional wisdom dictates that the dice will fall randomly. Most of them believe that games like craps, roulette and the lottery are easy to categorize as pure chance. There are certain laws on this planet Earth and uh, certain laws of nature. And so when I looked at the dice throw, I realized that I had to work within these, these laws of nature but that's not the view of Chris Palicki. After spending three years, Palicki has invented a technique that influences how the dice land. But not only has he developed the method, he teaches others how to use it. Dom is instantly hooked. If Palicki's technique works, it might just give him the advantage he's looking for. Despite having no knowledge of Palicki, he's prepared to take a risk by investing $595 in an exhaustive two-day training course, equivalent to $1,100 in today's money. Palicki's method is straightforward. It relies on controlling three crucial variables. Typically, the outcome of dice once they're thrown by the shooter is pure chance. However, if one can master the technique of controlling the release, it's possible to influence the resulting roll. So the technique's objective here is not to predict the future every time, but to remove the randomness, increasing the probable chance of a winning bet. The challenge is that there are six different ways to roll a seven, more than any other number. 
plus rules stipulate that the dice must bounce off the table and then the back wall before coming to a stop. Palicki's method emphasises not just the grip and initial positioning of the dice, but critically, it focuses on the manner of the throw. The objective is to throw the dice in such a way that they travel the maximum distance with the minimum amount of force, ensuring they carry minimum momentum upon reaching the back wall. Achieving this involves launching the dice at an optimal 45 degree angle, which allows for the greatest range with the least force. This controlled approach means that the dice expend less energy upon impact, reducing their movement before settling and enhancing the thrower's control over the game. While the dice need to hit the back wall, there are no rules dictating the specifics of their throw. Therefore, this strategy is not cheating. Better still, most people don't believe it's even possible. At this point, Dom's learned only the basics, but already he's convinced it works. He's keen to test out his newfound skills in Vegas, but before he does, Chris lets him in on a secret. His training course isn't just about teaching people, it's a vetting process for a small specialist team of professional craps players known as Rosebud. It's a pivotal moment in Dom's journey. Dom's obsessive will to beat the house is paying off. The pair are now meeting once a week to perfect the three crucial elements of his craps throwing in Chris's garage. First, he needs to memorize a handful of dice sets, the way in which the dice are arranged before they should throw them. By altering the dice's starting combination, it inevitably changes how they land. A shooter's come out roll in craps is important because it sets the precedent for future play. Rolling a seven or 11 is an advantage. Setting a four three or a five two is the best way to roll a seven on the come out. Then after the point is achieved, different combinations will help Dom avoid the point. Sets like one one or six six. It's sneaky, but the second element of the strategy is equally as important, the grip. Depending on where Dom grips his dice combination, it changes the amount of rotations the dice will go through as they travel in the air. It takes a lot of practice, but is practice worthwhile? A good grip means more consistent execution when rolling. The most difficult is the arm swing. It's the power behind each delivery and can drastically change everything. Dom refines his technique by creating a long, rigid sweeping motion originating from the elbow. This way, the execution is near identical every time he shoots. But the strategy is only half of it. Around his software job, Dom is now practicing the technique in excess of three hours every day. Later in his gambling career, he would reveal that sometimes he would practice late into the night on his own custom built craps table. He's getting good, and now he wants to wage war on the casino floor with real cash. The Rosebud team head to Atlantic City for his first serious test. Accompanied by other members, Dom nervously approaches the craps table. Quickly, it hits him. Throwing dice at home is very different to the casino floor under heavy surveillance. Betting real money adds the intensity. The first 30 minutes of play are a disaster, and Dom is questioning his ability. The other Rosebed players, however, reassure him. It's normal. An hour or so later and the mood has changed. Dom's pairs, grip, and throwing technique are on fire. People around the table are starting to cheer and confidence is growing, but there's a problem. Confident in his skills and hungry for money, Dom wants to increase the stakes, but the Rosebud members won't let him, they forbid it. One team member in particular, Jerry Patterson, doesn't like Dom's attitude. He thinks Dom's loud, outgoing nature will bring unnecessary heat to the team's activity, and as a sharp gambler knows, you don't want to catch the casino's attention. Now initiated into their secret team of craps players, the rules are shared with Dom. Discipline is paramount if they're to consistently beat the house undetected. Dom is horrified to hear their maximum stakes. He wants to make big money, but he wants in. Reluctantly, he agrees. The rules are simple. Avoid drawing attention, only bet moderate stakes, no showing off, no showboating, no celebrations, and cash out your chips once we've made a few thousand bucks. Each of the team members contribute a couple of thousand dollars towards the team's bankroll when they play. This helps smooth out varying results when there's a bad run of luck. At the end of the crap session, the total bankroll is then redistributed evenly. Typically, after a weekend in Vegas, the pot would grow around about 60% on average. Chris is an excellent shooter, but the Rosebud team and uh, all those fellas there just were not at my level of skill. But it doesn't take Dom long to realize he's the hottest shooter on the team. 
He's putting even amounts into their pot, working hard, winning the most, and others are benefiting. Coupled with the team's rules around staking, he's feeling suppressed. Winning is an exhilarating feeling, but this is quickly becoming an issue for Dom. Shortly after, Chris invites a friend to one of Rosebud's training sessions. His name is Frank Scoblet. Dom is instantly starstruck. Frank is an American author who is a widely published authority on casino games. Immediately, it creates tension within the group, and Dom and Frank hit it off. Their bond is strengthened as Dom proceeds to shoot a massive winning streak. On average, a seven should appear once for every six time a shooter rolls. However, Dom's skill set is allowing him to roll in excess of 30 times without hitting a seven once. Frank can't believe his eyes. Quietly, he asks Dom, how much have you made with your skills? With the small wages the group's rules permit, it doesn't amount to much perhaps a couple of thousand per weekend. Unknowingly, Frank has hit a nerve. Dom's frustration around betting stakes, emotional reactions, and other Rosebud players holding him back is brought to the surface. In Dom's mind, having an advantage is no good if you don't have the guts to play hard when the time is right. Much like his card count in past, he needs to bet bigger when he knows he has the upper hand. Seeing an opportunity, Frank is about to shake things up. A few months later, Scoblet reaches out to Dom with a unique offer. He suggests forming a new craps team, a team of their own where Dom is free to play how he wants without suppressing his flamboyant character and, most importantly, increase the stakes. Now Dom's conflicted, but in his heart he knows he's on the wrong team. He's producing most of the results for Rosebud and wants to get rich quick. Frank wants the same. With the pair acting freely, they can take things to a whole new level, so Dom agrees. Now, this obviously doesn't go down well with Chris and the team, but there's not much they can do about it. Dom, with the assistance of Frank, have formed their own craps playing team. They call it the Golden Touch, and this time, they're going big. The newly formed team have arrived in Vegas for New Year. It's not long at all before the pair are playing craps for $500 stakes. Dom's playing his imaginary air guitar and lashing out high fives each time he wins. However, the casino stick man is becoming suspicious. It's an unexpected turn they haven't experienced before. Watching Dom's technique and pairing, he tries to put him off. The house is playing dirty. Despite offering a fair game, they don't like shrewd players, much like card counters in blackjack. Now, despite the interfering stick man, the new team is a success. They've just taken the house for the modern equivalent of $25,000. A chunk of change that will fuel their next move, a more aggressive move. They plan to play craps at multiple destinations in multiple cities over the coming months. Everything they earn goes back into the pot, and as the pot grows, so do their bets. Win after win, week after week, they're banking big money. But there's a problem once more. Tales of the two extroverted craps players that rarely lose is spread in. Betting $7,000 per roll and shooting 20, 30, or 40 times in a row without rolling a seven is creating large crowds around the craps table. Bearing in mind that statistically, the odds of rolling a seven are one in six. Casino staff are now being briefed about these two men and their pictures are being circulated internally. On one occasion, one of the stick men jabs Dom with his stick before he rolls. Their cards are well and truly marked. Around a year later, the Golden Touch are back on the Vegas Strip. They've taken hundreds of thousands from the casinos at this point, but the heat is rising. Chris and Jerry were right but they're getting filthy rich, so they carry on. They walk into the casino floor and hit the tables for some action. Things are going well, and then the stick man is replaced. The casino bosses are watching from a distance. The new stick man turns to Dom, looks him square in the eyes and says, you're a dead man. It's a chilling message, but the pair are on a phenomenal winning streak and Dom is in the zone. He's been rolling dice for nearly 45 minutes now and he's hardly lost. But with this pressure mounting, they need to finish up and get out of there. A pit boss is now lurching over the table. His next point is a 10. In a ballsy and defiant move, Dom turns to the stick man. He wants to make a $100 hot bet on a hard 10. Essentially, it's a one roll bet where he must roll two fives. There's a 30 to one chance that he'll make it. Heart thumping, he sets his pair. He adjusts his grip. And following a long sweeping swing, the dice fly. Thump. It's a hard 10, and the crowd of onlookers erupt into cheers. There's nothing the casino staff can do about it. Dominic Larigio has sent a clear message to the house, banking $27,000 in an hour's worth of play. 
For context, that's around $50,000 in today's money. Just like the man in this next video, he's beat the casino at their own game and it feels great. And allegedly, today, he's still playing, although many of the Vegas venues won't let him through the door. 